we continue our state of interviews this morning looking at electoral candidates. You're seeing on screen now the candidates vying for your vote in the St. John's City South constituency. Of course, incumbent there is the Antigua Barbie the Labour Party's Ted Roy Cutie Benjamin. We've also got the UPP's Franz de Freitas. But this morning we feature the candidacy of Roland Timothy. His campaign in full focus this morning. He represents the, Nash, the Democratic National Alliance in the St. John City South constituency. Mr. Timothy, welcome to the set of ABS TV. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. And um, I'm indeed happy. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. And good morning to the viewing and listening public. All right. Uh, happy New Year to you and yours as well. Let me just start by saying that as well. Let's talk about your background and what you bring to the political for. Because when people think of voting for a candidate, you want to know why. Why, why should we vote for you? OK. Uh, simply put, because I'm the best choice for St. John City South. Why am I the best choice for St. John City South? Um, I moved to Antigua um, from Dominica a few years ago, um, a few moons ago, <laughs> actually. Uh, I've made Antigua and Barbuda my home. Uh, it's where I became a man. And, um, I am currently an insurance professional, so my career started out in customer service, and so I moved into the financial services sector, where I've had um, a very long stint in the insurance business. Uh, I've always wanted to make a difference because I firmly believe that um, the struggles that I had and the challenges that I had growing up, I do not want my children to experience that. So I have four children, born in Antigua and Barbuda, who I love dearly. And I want to make a difference for them. I've consulted with a number of persons um, and you know, just asking the question, what is it that we can do for our country or what our country can do for us? How can we better ourselves, better our country? And in asking those questions, um, I've you know, really saw, seen the need uh, for a better St. John's and a better Antigua and Barbuda. So um, in a nutshell, Roland Timothy is here to represent the people because we think that we need proper representation. We oftentimes um, speak about love, love for ourselves, love for our neighbors. But um, you know, you ask, what does love have to do with uh, the fact that I do not have cons constant running water in my, at my home? What does love have to do with the fact that um, the infrastructure in our communities is pretty much derelict and you know, needs attention? And so um, when I say that I bring love to my people, it's because I know the struggles. I've come through the ranks. Um, I come from a very humble home, a very humble household, raised by a single parent, a very strong lady. And um, that has taught me to recognize strength in, um, in persons who are willing to build and willing to make a difference. So this now brings me to the Democratic National Alliance. Um, I remember a few years ago when I met Ms. Joan Messiah for the very first time, she was a keynote speaker at a graduation, and I was very much impressed with her. And over the years, I followed her career in, in, in politics and as a professional lawyer in Antigua and Barbuda, and I recognized that there goes a very strong woman and somebody who um, I reached out to and who have reached back and um, has become a mentor, um, a, a mother figure, a big aunt, um, and a very true leader. So this is why Roland Timothy is here and is the best choice for St. John City South. I want to piggyback on what you just said, because sure. some people would say there's no real ideological difference, no real philosophical difference between the parties. There's a difference in faces, difference in uh, experience. Uh, what is it about the DNA that drew you? I mean, you talked about Joanne Messiah, but what is the ideology of the party that so ties into what you want to do in terms of bringing representation to the people of St. John City South? Okay, so again, it goes back to, um, as my colleague earlier would have mentioned, the whole issue of the parish councils. We believe that in decentralizing uh, government or taking the power back from the, 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 the central government system and putting it in the hands of the people will work more effectively for the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Um, we have a lot of talent in Antigua. We have uh, um, some very skillful people. We are very intelligent people. And I think we've been taken for granted. Um, we have a few people who make the decisions for the collective, and we do not think that that works well. So our philosophy in the Democratic National Alliance is to build leaders. We want to ensure that the wider communities in Antigua and Barbuda is filled with leaders. We, we do not want to continue just having followers. 
this whole, um, as we say, check your minister type of situation, it does not benefit anybody because um, we see what has obtained over the years. It's just a situation where there are few people in power and they basically give handouts um, to, to, to the general public. And we say, no, we, we can do much more than that. We need to have some dignity within our own selves. You know, if you teach a man to fish, you would have fed him and his family for a lifetime as opposed to always just giving him something and he's always there, you know, having to wait on you. So I'm sure that the, and, and I trust that the Antigua and Barbuda public is uh, well aware that the current system that we have uh, does not work. Um, you're not empowered in any way, you know. Uh, there are few people around you that you can say, well, yeah, this person is doing well, this person is, is being successful. And, and a lot of people are successful because of their own ambitions, not necessarily because of the opportunities that have been presented to them. So we in the Democratic National Alliance want to change that. We want to build leaders across the length and breadth of Antigua and Barbuda, and we think that will augur well for the country um, in the long run. All right, we've checked your website. It says that, that, that you claim that there's been little or no real development in the area uh, for a long time. And you, you've said quite clearly, as is your running mantra, that a better city south is possible. Yeah. How do you plan to make it better? In what really concrete ways are you planning to help the constituency? Okay, so I have been canvassing a lot in the constituency. I've been meeting with the people there and I've been hearing their voices. I've been asking what are the challenges that um, you know, you face and what are the solutions that you think you need. And in a big way, especially with the younger people in the community, uh, they say they, they want opportunities. They want to work. They do not necessarily want to um, be just hanging on the, on the, on the block with nothing to do. So that's one of the things. Um, youth development is going to be one of our, of our big things. When you look at the city of St. John's, um, the capital city in Antigua and Barbuda, and knowing that we rely so heavily on tourism, we need to ask ourselves, is that the type of um, environment, is that the St. John's city that we boast about, that we want people to come to our shores and to, to experience? And so we realize that infrastructure in St. John's especially, needs to be developed. I go to um, the Belmont and Brigands area, and in moving around, the roads are deplorable. Some places, I, I think they just have a bunch of footpaths, um, you know, but cars drive on it. So again, we look at it and we say, you know, this needs to change. We need to develop our, our infrastructure again in, in, the, in the St. John's area. So opportunities for the youth, better infra infrastructure, just the basic um, um, human needs that we all should enjoy in Antigua and Barbuda. This needs to be addressed, and this is what I want to do. All right, now we usually have uh, shadow ministers in political parties. It sounds like you're really hell-bent on, uh, or heaven-bent, on <laughs> urban development, <laughs> for want of a better term. Uh, what was it that you were responsible for if you should be voted into office and DNA uh, becomes the, the, the party that leads this country next general elections? What will you be responsible for, and what are some of the key areas that you hope to look at? Well, I can tell you that um, our leader have, um, well, she has a development plan where any one of us can um, be called upon to take on any particular ministry. And I'm sure that there's going to be some ministries that are going to be created. Uh, for example, as you know, that I am the spokesperson on the uh, parish council. So I'm sure that there will be something in line with the parish council. We're also looking at having the... Um, City Council, St. John's City Council, and having a mayor in St. John's as well. So I'm sure that I will be working closely along the lines. And um, I can see that public works plays a, a very um, important role in, in that as well. All right, now as we had the graphic earlier, we're going to put it up just again to show the candidates in that constituency. You've talked about your, your, your background, you talk about what you want to do. What sets you apart? When people go to the ballot and they see these, these emblems and they consider these faces and mm. they consider their track record uh, and what they potentially bring to the table, what's going to set you apart from Francis Freitas? What's going to set you apart from Stedroy Benjamin? What's going to set me apart from my opponents is that I am new, I am fresh, and I'm dynamic. I am a people person, I am approachable, and I listen to the people. Um, when I come to the people, I am not just um, 
you know, presenting and just filling up their head with things. I, I'm listening to them, and I ask them, what is it that you would like your country to do for you? How can your country enable you to be better and to develop yourself? So um, that sets me apart in, 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 in a large way from my opponents. I do not just drive around in a big vehicle and, you know, sit in my car and wave to, to persons. And, you know, politics is like a popularity contest, but it really should not be. You know, um, we need to be real with people. We need to, um, to, to have some empathy for people. Sometimes I, we find that people tend to have this, I am at this place and then you are here, you, you're beneath me. I want people to realize and understand that I am a regular person just like everybody else who wants to make a difference. And ultimately, I'm here to listen to what it is that you the challenges that you're facing, and what it is that you would like to do to overcome those challenges. Let's be frank, though. When you think of the Antiguan uh, populace, we have this populace saying, you know who you have, you don't know who you're going to get. Mm. And so people somehow um, vote for incumbents time and time again. Uh, we know the, the previous administration of the Antigua Barbados Labour Party in, in office for more than 30 years. This current administration is seeking its third term. How do you want to appeal to, to voters in terms of really enacting the change that perhaps they want to see but aren't willing to take the step to, to, to bring it to fruition? Well, one of the things I, um, I would like to say, right, change is often difficult. As you said, you know what you have, you do not know what you're going to get. And you can look at it as somebody in a relationship, for example. Somebody may be in a relationship that is not necessarily ideal, but they're comfortable with it. And something new might be presented, but there's that fear should I leave from what I have and, you know, what guarantee do I have that this is actually going to be better? But I will say to the general public, to Antigua and Barbuda, is that we understand that change is difficult. We understand that change is scary. But sometimes you just need to have that courage to change. Once you have that courage within yourself, and we all recognize that um, courage is in our DNA. And once we can bring that out of us, um, we can execute that, that courage to change. And you have tried the red. You have tried the blue. What has that gotten you? You know, people talk about, oh, um, experience. What has experience gotten the people of St. John City South? So if you're going to go based on, on just experience, then ask yourself, are you really getting what you deserve or what you rightly deserve? When we go out in the communities, we, um, we reach the, the, the people through our public engagement. So we go in the, you know, the more populated areas of each constituency and we speak to the policies that we're bringing. So I, we also have our website, as you mentioned, and so our plans and policies are there. There's our Vision 2040 um, policy document, which is basically the blueprint or the roadmap into what it is that we're offering for Antigua and Barbuda. And the hope is that people are going to pay attention to what it is exactly that we are um, offering to them. And I just want to say again, you know, courage, it takes courage to change, but courage is in our DNA and we should all, you know, think about it and say, well, hey, I know what I've had before, but here goes something that's presented. What do you have to lose? You, you have more to gain than anything else. And if after electing Roland Timothy and the Democratic National Alliance into government and you're not satisfied, then you have the right and the, and the ability to decide, you know what, I'm going to change that as well. But you have to start somewhere. You have to start the change somewhere. The, um, you know, the, the established parties have been there for so long and all we keep getting is a, um, a case of musical chairs. So you basically see the same set of people rotating between parties and it's the same set of policies that are um, or the same programs that are, um, that are being put out there. And what is that getting us? So the Democratic National Alliance is saying, here comes an opportunity. The time is now right to get that courage and develop that courage and have that change, that change that we all so justly and rightly deserve. You've talked about compassionate rational, committed leadership. Explain to the people what that means, because uh, it would then suggest that you have not seen, or the people have not seen any rational leadership, any committed leadership, any compassionate leadership. How is it that you plan to bring that to the people? Again, we um, are planning on having a bottoms-up approach where everybody is involved in the community development. If it is, for example, um, you want a, a, a light bulb changed um, in, an area of your, um, your, your community. Mm -hmm. By coming together, the parish council is the one or the, 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 the body that is going to, you know, 
taking all of the um, uh, whatever it is that is needed and connect the dots and, and make this happen. So in doing that, in putting the power back in the hands of the people, you're creating leaders. And what we find is that if, for example, in your job, right, um, you're doing very well. And so um, you see somebody who is coming up and you help to develop that person. What that does for you, it sharpens your skills even better. It creates an opportunity for you to now um, bring somebody up and for you to be elevated yourself. So when we talk about leadership, that's what we're talking about. We want to be able to, you should not be afraid to empower people. And it, it comes with having an understanding. If you do not understand how the man, the common man on the street feels and thinks and so on, you are not going to have compassion for him. So we say in that in the Democratic National Alliance, we have a group of people who are new, fresh, and dynamic, but not just that as a catchphrase. We understand what the common person, the challenges that the common person faces. And so we want to help develop and build as a whole for more people in Antigua and Barbuda to develop that leadership quality in all of us. And that will make everything better for everybody. You talked about having the courage to change. It's in our DNA, and people may be dissatisfied with the status quo, mm -hmm. but there are two options on the opposition slate. Mm -hmm. There is the Democrat National Alliance, there is the United Progressive Party. What do you think gives your party the edge? What gives my party the edge is, our, again, going back to our 20 vision for, um, 2040 vision um, program. Um, the plans and policies that we are espousing to the people of Antigua and Barbuda, we think it's a cut above the rest. We have basically shown we're not waiting until we get into government to, to start offering solutions. We have already started that. Um, if people are um, you know, in tune to, to the plans and policies that we're, we're putting out there, you will already see that um, a lot of the, um, even the things that the, the present government would have implemented, we would have spoken about it. We would have put the government's feet to the fire. We would have said, you know what, this is not working right. This is what we think needs to be done better. And I think our, um, um, our second vice president, um, colleague Anthony Stewart, um, based on the economics and so on, he would have put out a lot of um, policies out there that you realize it's, it, it makes more sense to do it that way, and then we see some of those things implemented. What we want people to understand is that you would have heard it from the Democratic National Alliance first. So we have already started putting out our plans and programs, and we see that what we're putting out is also effective, right? So we have the plans, we have the policies, and we have the people to make a very big difference in Antigua and Barbuda. All right, we've only got one minute left. Let's just ask you this. The last general elections here saw the incumbent return to power. There's only one opposition member in Antigua Barbuda. Elections held on January 18. We have a party in power, and Roland Timothy is the only only member of the opposition voted into power. What can we expect from you in Parliament? <laughs> um, I like that one. Um, if that was to happen, but I still think that we're going to win the general elections outright. But if that was to happen, it means then that the Democratic National Alliance is one step further or one step closer into making a very big difference in Antigua and Barbuda. And you may just see Roland and Timothy, but then what comes with Roland and Timothy would be the Democratic National Alliance. All right, bringing the Democratic National Alliance on his back, Roland Timothy here, the delegate, that's the candidate for St. John City South. This is not a Queen show. And <laughs> uh, Stel Roy Cutie Benjamin is the AVLP incumbent, who has got Francis Peters. But Roland Timothy, your guest this morning, exposing his plans and the plans of the Democratic National Alliance, should you vote them into office on January 18. He's promised rational, compassionate, and committed leadership. He says a better St. John City South is possible. All right, we're going to continue interviewing more DNA candidates right after this break. See you after this.